It's been too long since we took the time No one's to blame I know time flies so quickly But when I see you, darling It's like we both are falling in love again It'll be just like starting over Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I don't know if you've heard this John Lennon song before. Lately, I've been on a kick listening to all of John Lennon's solo works, and this one might be my favorite. Chances are you've heard this a lot of times before and never realized how many chords and complicated chords are packed into those eight bars. The reason you've never realized it before is because I don't think John Lennon set out to pack 10 really cool jazz chords in to eight bars of music. Of course he didn't do that. He had a melody. He just had an idea for a really beautiful melody and then he figured out what the chords were underneath it. I, I bet my house on it. It's not a big house, but I bet it that it was the melody before it was the chords. I have a video all about the most beautiful melodies in existence, or what I think are the most beautiful melodies in existence. You can watch that. You can watch the, the more in-depth video that I put on Nebula as well. But this is one of those. It's a great melody. And I want to show you how just thinking of a beautiful line like that can lend itself to all of this complicated harmony without even trying very hard. But let's do it over at the piano. Maybe you heard me play this chord progression on my Instagram account. I did that last week and then I, I just kind of noodled over it and I asked everybody if they could name the chord progression, like if they could figure out what song it was just from me soloing over it. Nobody did. A lot of people named the chords um, just about correctly, but nobody knew the song. That was interesting to me. Here's the Instagram that I posted. It's a really fun progression. Um, I love the fact that it is in A, because I don't normally play in A. I'm not a guitar player. And then I love this second chord. And the way that that scale sounds over it. I love more about it as well, but that's, maybe that's my favorite thing. Let me, let me show you what it's about. Da -da. Just a normal A chord, maybe with an add to. Now we've got this A augmented chord. Right, that's a major third here and a major third here. And the first time the melody was. Second time. It's a little hard to nail down exactly what John Lennon meant for that second melody. It could be that. It could be. I lean on the second one. I think it's the second one. But this was his idea, to start from the fifth, come up to the root in a scale, and then to raise that. And then... And if you really sit down to put that to chords, there aren't any options. The melody itself tells you just exactly what the chords should be. Right, that's clearly in the key of A, and you need to establish the beginning of your song, so it's gonna be an A major chord. But 
than this one. This is a kind of, you know, it's kind of a popular thing to do. Um, I can't think of any songs right off the bat that do it. Maybe I can by the time I edit the video. But I think that people did that. Then it's, it makes perfect sense to go to the two chord. And then the five chord as we do. But check it out, we've got A major. And you could even call it like A6 or A major seven because it includes those notes in the melody. And then we've got A augmented. Maybe A augmented seven or A seven with a sharp five. And it's got a nine in there too. We might even call this A nine sharp five. Now we've got B minor nine. And how gorgeous is that nine on that B minor chord? Back to the two. And again, I think it's because of the melody. How nice is that big skip? I'm a big proponent of skips in melodies. From the five of B minor, all the way up to the 11. The 11 is one of the most gorgeous notes you can ever play on a minor chord. And then we come down to this note, and it makes sense again to go from B minor to the five, which is E7. But the melody puts us on the 13 of that five chord. It keeps coming down until it does this little neighbor tone right here, which is the flat five. It gives us an E7 flat five. And it, it, he did it without trying. I mean, you know, it's not like he set out to play a flat five dominant chord in this song. I guarantee it. Or a 13 chord, right? It's so beautiful. And of course, you have to do it again. Two, five, three. Right, we're on the C sharp minor chord, which is the three, minor three in the key of A. So C sharp minor. And again, ah, he reaches up again to that 11 on that minor chord, and he does the exact same thing again. We get, but this time, instead of hitting the 13, he hits the sharp five, and there's the five, and here's the flat five again. Now, now why is that? He could have gone sharp five here. But it doesn't. It doesn't sound right, does it? This one? What if he did the 13 here? Might have still been a hit, but the reason that it doesn't work is because right here, we're doing a 2 5 for a second. C sharp minor to F sharp 7, which is going to lead us to B minor. And one thing that we know about B minor is that B minor doesn't have this note in it. It doesn't have the major third in it, it has the minor third. So when you're on the five of that minor chord, to play the 13 on it, D sharp, when B minor is gonna be your next chord, that's why it doesn't work because we have to anticipate that minor sound that's coming up, if that makes sense. That gives us another augmented sound, doesn't it? Now we're hitting sharp five, five, flat five, and then regular five. And now this five becomes the nine of B minor. And we've got another A major chord, but this time with a nine in the melody. Then he raises it. And we have that really cool sound again, which is like A augmented nine. Or if we were to put this, this G in there, which I don't think is a stretch to do, then we could have again A7 or A9 with a sharp five. And it gives us this great chord progression, both for the melody that John wrote and for taking a solo on.
told you I would talk about that scale, didn't I? Yeah, let's go back to it. All right. What is this? You might recognize it as a, a scale that has a different root than an A. It's D melodic minor, and it works perfectly over A augmented. You might also confuse this chord, this A augmented. You might confuse it, your ears might confuse it, as did a lot of people in the comments on my Instagram uh, little game that I played, they thought that that second chord was a four minor chord. So I was going. Instead of hearing that as A augmented, they heard it as minor four. Like, like D minor with a sharp seven. Maybe they thought that because of the scale I was using, because they recognized that D melodic minor. Maybe they thought that, that it was a, you know, a D chord of some sort, but it holds on to the A. It's such a beautiful scale to use over that augmented chord, especially because it's a, it, it's a seven chord, right? Maybe even a nine chord, we said. It hits all of those tones, and it's so beautiful. Even in my improv, I did this big skip up to the E. And then I think I tried to disguise it. Something like that. And then I think I disguised this one by putting it down an octave. Over this, this F sharp seven chord, I might, I might just play an altered scale, altered dominant scale, which is like the diminished scale because it starts out with um, a half step and then a whole step and then a half step and then a whole step, but then it goes whole step, whole step, whole step the rest of the way. Um, I messed up a second ago and I, I wasn't thinking like that and I played a wrong note, you probably heard it, but... I did it down here. How about that one? You could also use that over it. Do you recognize that one with a different root, perhaps? It looks like B harmonic minor, which is perfect because we're coming right up on it, right? going to B minor, so why not use those beautiful notes of a B harmonic minor scale? This sound over the F sharp leads you so perfectly to the B minor. And again, I, I know that John Lennon didn't know that stuff, but intrinsically he knew it, and he made his melody line up just like that, with those kind of scales. And isn't it amazing? But I mean, I have a whole video about the Beatles and about how I think their whole, you know, musical landscape was formed by those early R&B songs that they listened to. And the way that their ears got acclimated to beautiful melodies like this, beautiful harmonies like this, without ever even knowing what they were called. If you come up with a melody that you think can stand the test of time, or even just, you know, is good enough for you to record, and it, and it dictates to you what the harmony should be, I think you know that you've got a great melody. A melody that stands on its own without any harmony. It does, doesn't it?
I know you heard it. I know you heard all of the harmony as I played that melody. It's because it's that special. <laughs> 